Hey YouTube, my name is Heather and I love end-to-end -end content here on YouTube. I'm hoping to use this channel as an excuse to sit on the floor and talk about the unethical practices of multi-level marketing companies. Today, I wanted us to watch a quick video from the top Beachbody coach named Melanie Mitro. I say she's the top coach because she has been number one in the entire network four separate times and she's been in the top 10 coaches three other times. She's going to talk about the common worries that people have about joining Beachbody Coaching. Really excited to listen, and you can let me know what you think below. Hey guys, it is Melanie Mitro. Welcome back for video number two in my sneak peek into coaching. So, you know, you heard in my very first video a little bit about me and my story and how I got started and really how Beachbody has blessed our life. But in this video, we are going to break down all of the buts and the whatabouts and the hearsay or maybe some of the myths that you feel like are reasons why you haven't committed to becoming a Beachbody coach yet. So in MLMs, it's very important to listen and pay attention to the language that they use. She's trying to tell us why people don't want to join coaching. And instead of calling it people's reasons, she's saying they're myths, they hearsay, they keep you from joining Beachbody coaching. In my opinion, that's invalidating people's very valid fears and concerns about coaching. In MLM, in the MLM industry, there is a big issue of the us versus them dichotomy. So anyone who questions MLM, anyone who wonders about the efficacy of it or wonders how people can actually make money is automatically a bully, it's automatically against you and doesn't understand what you're actually doing. So that's a great way to start calling someone's worries hearsay and a myth instead of just saying people's reasons that they're worried about coaching. So that is a very interesting way to start the video. And a lot of these things I get on a regular basis. Some of them I have even thought myself. So let's get started. So number one, the biggest thing that people say to me is I can't coach other people because I am not at my health and fitness goals yet. And that is a-okay. And honestly, a lot of times I know you might think that I'm crazy, but you know, I look at my journey and when I started coaching, I was only 10 pounds into my weight loss, right? I still had 20 more pounds to go. I was very new to health and fitness. I didn't have, I don't have a background in nutrition or fitness. And for me, you know, I really said, okay, I'm feeling the effects of eating healthier. I'm feeling the effects of the beach body workouts. And I am going to show people through my social media platform, how I'm making the transition, how I am changing my body. And I'm going to teach people how they can do it too. And so now, I don't have any issue with showing people your fitness journey on social media, but I do have an issue with unqualified people giving exercise and health advice to people who need specialized assistance. So if you're having issues with your food, you should be seeing a dietitian, a nutritionist, or just a doctor. If you are having issues with your weight and you want to exercise, you should be seeing a trainer. If you're trying to work through an injury, you should be seeing a physiotherapist. My only issue I have is when these unqualified coaches get, try to give advice that could potentially be damaging to someone. So I might be being too nitpicky again, but that's just my opinion. I think it could be potentially dangerous and could result in greater health issues for people. So every single week, I would say to myself, all right, like, this is my week. I'm gonna take my pictures, and then a week from today, I'm going to take another set of photos, and I'm going to compare them. I'm going to make a collage on my, an app on my phone, and I'm going to show people the transformation, and I'm going to talk about it. So every week, I would write. I would write a progress update. I would share my meal plan for the week. I would take a picture of, do my side-by-side. -side. I would talk about any obstacles or roadblocks or setbacks I had. I would then talk about how I worked through those roadblocks. I would share things I was learning. I would share mindset. If I was getting stronger, lifting heavier, do, if I had to modify, I had an injury, like I would literally tell people the exact journey as it unfolded. 
And the cool part is at first it was kind of quiet, kind of silent, but every single day I would show up and I would share and I use my personal Facebook page. You can use Instagram, you can use Facebook, you can use whatever platform you want to use that you feel most comfortable with. But I made my life almost as if it was a reality TV show. Like people could publicly watch my journey. What that did was it inspired people. It motivated people that were watching me from afar that really were struggling, right? They were seeing me change. They were seeing my, my smile get brighter. They were seeing my skin clear up. They were seeing my energy soar through the roof. They were seeing that and they were inspired to make a change. So it a big issue I have with beach body coaches, again, not the sharing of the journey, but making claims about health and fitness. So example there that her skin was clearing up because of the, well, she didn't say this, but because she means because of the beach body products. So someone with acne might see that and say, oh, well, all I need to do is use the beach body products and my acne will clear up. I've seen people say that they reverse their hypothyroidism by exercising and using beach body products. I have a big, big issue with that because if you have hypothyroidism that is not properly treated, you are not going to have any energy even if you sleep 10, 12 hours a night. Your hormones are going to be all off and you're just going to feel like crap constantly. So someone with this chronic condition may see that, may feel desperate to feel good and healthy again. And may say, oh, well, I don't want to spend money on medication for the rest of my life. I'm just going to do this instead. And while it is possible to reverse hypothyroidism without medication, it should be done under the strict supervision of a doctor, not of a random beach body coach that you met on the internet. So I have no problem with coaches sharing their journeys. I have problems with coaches making statements that, that could make an unhealthy person think that they can fix all of their health issues using these products. Let me know what you think about that below. People started asking me how they could too do the programs I was doing and that was how I started acquiring customers. Also, people tell me all the time that they've followed me since the beginning and that my journey inspires them and that watching me from where I started to where I am now, really kind of makes it like you're a real person and if you can do it so can i so it's really about sharing your journey and the biggest part about all of that is it kept me super accountable to staying on track with my own health and fitness because i wanted to make it my business and if i wanted people to trust me then i needed to be proof that it worked right so that was a really big benefit to coaching was my own personal accountability People always say to me too, like, I don't want to sell to my family and friends and, you know, that I don't want to, I don't want people to think I'm just talking to them to sell to them. And so I get that because I'm very sensitive to being sold to. And I instantly put up a guard if somebody is like trying to be a product pusher at me. And so for me, I thought, okay, well, I am going to, number one, I'm going to tell my friends and family what's working for me, right? Um... I want to make sure that I let people know that, hey, I am a health and fitness coach. If you're following me, if you're watching what I'm doing and you're interested, here's how we can get connected. So I very simply just let people know the journey that I was on. Then That's extremely contradicting to what we learned about how Beachbody Uplines teaches their downlines, how to get to Emerald and then the Diamond Rank promotion. We heard that... We heard coaches being pressured to sign up their spouses, sign up their friends, their mom, their dad, their grandma, and discount coaches, meaning they just sign up to get a lower price on products. So we hear first, tell your friends and family to sign up. If they love you, they're going to support you. And then here we hear, oh, just let them know what you're doing. And if they think it would benefit them, then they will join you and they will help you. I know those weren't the same coaches saying those two things, but all over the MLM industry, there's constant, there's constant contradictions like, oh, it's so easy. Our job isn't hard to, oh, you need to work really hard to, you can have time freedom to, you need to work constantly and you can't take a day off. I wish that coaches and distributors would just keep on one line of discussion and not change everything they say. It seems like every other day because it's probably really confusing for the coaches who are joining her to say, well, you, you're, you're saying now just let my family know, but last night in my Emerald training, you told me that I had to sign up my husband. So which one is it? 
and I created content because I wanted <coughs> other people to bring down those walls and I wanted them to trust me. So my weekly meal plan, how I grocery shop, how I prep, I would take pictures of everything, motivational quotes that inspire me, things that are happening in my life, right? I just made my social media all about like how I was living this healthy lifestyle. But then I made sure to say in my last line or at the beginning, hey, if this spoke to you or if I've inspired you, I can coach you. So I would put these public like calls to action in what I was creating and people would fill out an application. And I made an application through um, an application called Wufu, W-U-F-O-O, Wufu.com. You can create a free form or so Beachbody coaches like to say we're not selling, we are telling stories. So she's just saying she makes makes our content that has value about nutrition, meal planning, exercise. And then she says, if this touched you, please reach out to me. I get what they're saying. They're they're not they're not necessarily saying, oh, you need to buy my product, buy my product now. But you are telling the story with the intention of selling. In my opinion, it is the exact same thing. Beachbody coaches like to say they are business owners or entrepreneurs and that they are not salespeople. In my opinion, Beachbody coaches pay the company for the privilege of selling their product, for the privilege of posting on social media and providing free advertising because we know Beachbody coaches are not compensated for their time. They are compensated for whenever someone buys something through their link or when they recruit someone. So. What, let me know what you think about that below. There's a lot of content here that we can really dive deep into and dissect. Or Google Forms, and that's something I'll teach you too when you become a coach on my team. But I would have people that would request more information. I would message people that liked my post or that said, wow, you're really inspiring. And I would let them know that, hey, you don't have to be inspired from afar. I can actually help you and, and I can coach you based on my own personal Yes. So anytime you like or comment on an MLM person's post, they will message you and they are going to continue following up with you until you block them. So be careful liking any posts of people you think could be in an MLM. Journey. So it really wasn't family and friends. Actually, yes, my, my husband was my, one of my first customers and my mom and my sister-in-law, but it was because they believed in me, right? And they saw that it was working. But very quickly, it began to grow as other people started talking and sharing and seeing my journey, all right? The next thing. Your family didn't support you just because they believe in you. I think they did it because they felt like they had to. It's their job as your family. Again, I don't, I don't know the dynamics in her family, but that seems like a strange statement. If you go and say, hey, mom, I really want to, I really want to do this. I really need you to, you need you to support me. I feel like it'd be tough for a mom to say no or a sister-in-law to say no. Again, that's just my opinion. Thing is, is this a pyramid scheme? Like, is this legit? Is this a ripoff? Is this a scam? I mean, I got that at the beginning. I got it from my husband. I got it from my neighbors. I got it from lots of people that thought for sure I was involved in something that was illegal. Now, here's the scoop. I know for certain because I had to go Google what a pyramid scheme was when I first started because when somebody said that to me, I looked like a deer in headlights. I had no idea how to respond to that question. So here's the scoop. A pyramid scheme is illegal and all network marketing companies, which is what Beachbody is, they're regulated by the FTC, which means there are ways that we can operate business. And a big part of what we do is not you know, what is illegal is saying, I want you to sign up and then you're going to sign up your family members. And I don't care if you ever use the products, right? You don't even have to buy. I don't, I don't know where the, I don't care if you ever use the products comes from. That's not part of what a pyramid scheme is. So far, she said pyramid scheme is you sign up and you sign up your family members. So far, that is what Beachbody is. So let's listen to what else she has to say. The products, but I get paid a commission every time you sign up. That's a pyramid. And it's like the person at the top is the only one that makes money and everybody below and you're just signing distributors. And If you sign up a coach, you don't necessarily get a recruitment bonus, but you get a commission off of their challenge pack or they're now calling it a total solution pack, I think. So that also relates to Beachbody. So, so far, Pyramid Scheme and Beachbody, they have several similar characteristics. She said only the people at the top make money. That's the same with Beachbody. 
we can tell from the income disclosure statement, we know according to the Ponzinomics book that at least 80% of every single MLM company has to be on the bottom, either not making any money or losing money. For the remaining 20%, people like her at the top to become millionaires and make millions and millions of dollars every single every single year. So far, Beach Body sounds like a pyramid scheme, in my opinion, according to what she says. Companies have in the past gotten shut down for that reason. You know, as, as a company, we really, we have this mixture of consumers. So we lead with the product. We want people to get physical results. We want people to have a transformation. We want people to change their lives and be healthier. We want them to live a healthy and fulfilling life. We earn a commission, and I'll talk about that later, off of our customers, right? And even our coaches. So if you come into my team, I want you to use the products. I want you to have the results. I want you to be able to share your real and authentic story. All right. That's really important to me is that you come in and you share your own personal transformation story. A transformation is so emphasized in Beachbody that you have to have some kind of mental or physical results from using Beachbody products. Of course, that means that you have to buy products every single month. We know to meet your personal volume requirement that you can buy or sell, that you'll see Beachbody coaches who have Shakeology, Energize, Recover, Collagen, the Hydrate products. So that's like three, four hundred dollars of Beachbody products every single month. And I doubt that these individuals are actually creating a spreadsheet that shows what they spend every single month and what they bring in and then determining what their profit is instead of just their revenue. I feel like if people actually did that, they would see that they're in the red and barely making any money or even worse, losing money. So we have a great mixture of customers and we have a great mixture of team members and anybody can surpass them. Do you really have a great mixture of customers, I wonder? And when we, we hear from top Beachbody coaches that if someone loves the product and they're participating in challenge groups, that they're the ideal candidate to be a coach and that they'll eventually become a coach. Of course, Beachbody is never going to publish how many customers who are not coaches that they actually have. I just, I, I wonder about the true, I wonder if that statement is actually true. I don't think it is me anybody can surpass their their sponsor coach it's all about the number of lives you change and the effort that you put in so we are a company that it is a product and a service that we offer and we get paid as coaches for the peer-to-peer -peer support by people purchasing these products from us we get a commission or a bonus for that so be funny not a pyramid scheme all right no one is going to surpass melanie mitchell because she's been at the top literally at the top a ton of times. She's probably making three million dollars a year based on the income disclosure statement. I guess theoretically someone could bring in more money than her, but we've talked about this before. You cannot physically surpass your upline based on where you are in the pyramid. You your upline when they recruit you could be five star, they might not they might not advance and rank to six star diamond and then you could advance and rank to six star diamond and you could still be make you can make more money than them but you're still directly under them in the pyramid so they're making money off of everything you do and off of everything your downline does all right, what if I'm an introvert? What if I'm shy? I have said this in so many calls before. I was the girl that would pull into my garage and I would shut the door to the garage before I ever got out of the car because I really don't want to talk to anybody, right? I just didn't want to do small talk. I am always the girl that kind of stands in the back and is quiet at any events we go to. I'm just not an extroverted person. But when I'm passionate about something, I could talk about it all day long. And I love my business because it allows me to be a teacher. It allows me to inspire people. It allows me to help them. I'm a giver. That's my natural personality. And I love that I can build my business behind my computer screen. I can do these videos and, and that's something I've grown into. I was really nervous about it at first. But I have been able to take my introverted personality, but channel it in a way that's geared towards what I'm passionate about. And I'm not afraid to share my journey because I know that it can inspire and help somebody else. All right. When she says things like that, she's making it seem like any introverted person can do this. And that is not the case. Your ability to <clears throat> overcome feelings of shyness, of wanting to be alone, 
that comes from your life experiences. I know this woman is very highly educated. She has a bachelor's degree, I think, in psychology and a master's degree as well. And so if you're going through grad school, you know, you have to do lots of presentations. You have to talk to thesis supervisors and your classmates. And she probably developed significant public speaking abilities during her educational career. And not everyone has the, that kind of experience and people might have other fears and concerns about interacting with people that are not as easy to overcome. And you are a salesperson when you're in Beachbody and not everyone is meant to be a salesperson. Not everyone wants to reach out to 50 people a day. Not everyone has the ability to just hear rejection constantly and keep going. Not everyone has the ability to just disconnect themselves from the emotional response when people are saying no, because if everyone says no, you're not making any money and you can't feed, clothe, and house yourself and your family. I just find that interesting that she says, oh, I'm introverted and I overcame it, but not everyone has the ability to do so. Okay, so looking at my list here. Oh, I don't have time. This is a big one I get a lot. So I started coaching and I had two kids under the age of three. I did not have a babysitter. I Matt worked full time. And so I had to like find 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there to build my business. I have coaches on my team that work full time, that are teachers, that are nurses, that do shift work, that work in corporate, and they have to be strategic. And I actually believe that the busiest people are the most successful because we don't have a lot of time to waste, right? We've got to use it's fine to work 20 minutes here and there when you're just building your business, but once you once you decide whether or not you want to go full time and make a full time income, they're going to tell you well, of course you're not making full-time income. You're only working an hour a day, but then they use the time freedom argument as a way to recruit you and draw you into the business. Use our time wisely. And so for me, I operated my business in these power pockets. So it was these very short blocks of time where I focused on what I call business producing activities, income producing activities. And I was able to build my business in the pockets of raising my boys and, and being a mom and a wife, right? And so you can do it too. It is just about being disciplined, focusing on the right things, clearing out your distractions, and then having a Clearing out your distractions means no sitting on the couch, mindlessly watching Netflix to decompress, no scrolling through your phone, no going out for coffee with your friends. They're going to tell you you need to make sacrifices to succeed in your business. You need to, to decide what's important to you and what's not. You need to decide whether to choose your hard, meaning that one, do you want to do you want to give up Netflix for two years to build your business, or do you want to go back to how you were before because that's those are both hard and a lot of the time how people were before their MLM is very vulnerable, might be going through mental health struggles, financial issues. Maybe they, they are lonely, their husband or wife is away for work and they don't have any connections. Maybe they're a stay-at-home parent, maybe they're a new mom who feels uncomfortable in their body. So that's why MLM or Beachbody Uplines will tell you to tell them your why, which is usually a very emotional why they're told if your why doesn't make you cry, you need a new why. So then they can use that why as a way to say, well, if you want to achieve your why, if you want to be home with your kids, you need to give up Netflix. You need to give up date night and you need to focus on your business. Even though when we recruited you, we said you could have time freedom. Vision. So the last thing I want to say is anybody can be successful at this business, but you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. If you don't have a clear reason why you want to be successful, it's really easy to hit snooze. It's really easy to skip a workout if you don't have a reason. Sorry, I kind of preemptively talked about your why. <clears throat> She's going to go into what I was just talking about. And she says, anyone can be successful. The way she said that, it makes it seem like anyone can be a millionaire like me. But then Uplines will come back and say, you need to stop just thinking about the money. There's other ways to be successful. There's other ways to have an impact in, in Beachbody. Again, very confusing use of language, in my opinion. 
reason that is strong enough to make a change. For me, I, my driving force was, I didn't want to argue with Matt about money. I wanted to be in the best shape of my life. I wanted to fit into my pre-pregnancy clothes. But I also knew that I could earn trips that we wouldn't be able to pay for by helping people every single month. I had a bigger picture of where I wanted my life to be three to five years from that starting point. And each body rewards <clears throat> the coaches who recruit the most people by sending them on trips that are not free unless you are in the top 10 elite. If you're going on the success trip, part of it, success club trip, part of it may be covered, but you still have to pay for your airfare. So unless you're literally in the very, very top of the pyramid, the coaches, the, sorry, the trips are not free. And that was what drove me to get out of bed and do the work and make some of the sacrifices at the beginning and living my life like most people aren't willing to live, which means getting up a little earlier, staying up a little late, right? Saying no to some things that would be fun to do, but I really want to get ahead has allowed us the ability to now make decisions that never would have been possible if it wasn't for those sacrifices to begin with. All right, guys, I hope this is helpful when it comes. So that's all I have for today. She's saying now you have to, I just talked about this, make sacrifices so you can be successful in your business. But again, when they recruit you, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you you can work whenever you want, that you can be successful and still be there for your family and your friends and work from wherever you want, when you want. Extremely contradicting. They say one thing to get you in the door and then say another thing and guilt you and shame you when you're not working enough to make them enough money. So that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you think below. Thank you.